watch yeah okay i like watching pretend people i like watching 3d is my absolute favorite amazing wow. big tits 3d they look real i have one more thing the second time i got my boobs done i actually put together a pinterest board of titties mm. and took them to my surgeon and said i want my boobs like this all right guys nina galley here today uh from bali bali however you pronounce it <laughs> <laughs> originally from la but i'm definitely adopting bali as my new home spot okay yeah and those are like two opposites right they are yeah but you know what it's nice when you get the option to go back and forth you're like having a perfect balance of life mm. if you've never lived outside of america i'm like going in straight into it but yeah. if you've never lived outside of america you kind of have a restless attitude towards america like oh we do this well but i hate this i hate the traffic i hate the food right the moment you leave you really appreciate america not to say that i don't love bali but because they're so opposite the the those things stand out a right. lot like having clean water is a big deal here that we take for granted. Mm. So the food's better there though, not gonna lie. Is it? <laughs> the food is way better in Bali. Wow. Healthier. I mean, everyone there knows how to cook too. Like mm. seasonings, spices. And you're yeah. probably living amazing out there. Yeah. I'm walking every morning to get like croissants, <laughs> at, you know, for breakfast with an amazing cappuccino. Fire cappuccinos there. Mm. They make amazing coffee. Indonesia produces a lot of coffee. I mean, I know people know Java. Yeah. <laughs> Java is one of the islands in Indonesia. They oh, produce wow. a lot of Java as well. So, yeah. And then walking around getting fried rice, it's like $2. Oh, yeah. yeah. You could probably eat for like five bucks a day out there. Yes. And very well. That's cool. <laughs> do they speak English? Yes. Oh, nice. Most Balinese do speak English, although sometimes it's broken. You can get around the island easily. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. What compelled you to go there? Was it planned or was it? The first time I went to Bali was supposed to be for my 31st birthday and I was getting over my, or my 30th birthday. Yeah. And I was getting over my ex-boyfriend mm. and I was just doing a solo for me trip. Just did, you? Just me by myself. Wow. Yeah. Um, this was last December, not 2023, but 2022. Um, I was there for one week, loved it, cried all the way home, cried. <laughs> Three weeks later, I was back. Wow. Yeah. And then after that, went home, came back, stayed for eight months. Damn. Yeah. You like those Asian guys out there? I, you know, okay, so <laughs> let me tell you, I have a crush. I really want my next boyfriend to be like Japanese or Korean. Okay. Yeah. Like the Asians that are very Tokyo Drift, Fast and Furious. Yeah, yeah. The spicy. drivers, the bad boys. The bad boys, yeah. Are they out there in Bali? Mm, no. I'm not going to lie. The Balinese are, they're not really bad boys. They're kind of feminine, right? No, I don't. I think they just, you know, it's a Hindu culture. So most of them are a little more like respectful. I like respectful men too. Don't get it twisted, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just a different attitude. Okay. It's more edgy in the like Northern Asian countries. The Southern ones are a little more traditional, family oriented. Mm. Mm -hmm. I feel that. Less individualistic. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's the opposite of L.A. for sure. Yeah. Do you date in L.A. often? No. <laughs> I haven't been laid since I was in Bali. What? Yeah. Wow. So you don't f with L.A. guys. I want to. They don't f with me. Why do you think that? I, well, I just haven't been on a date oh. since I've been back in America. So you're not on the apps? I am on. My manager told me to get on Bumble. Okay. Um, I haven't met anybody. I think my swipes, I think they're gay. <laughs> No, for real. There's no way they're straight. Like some of the guys, I'm like, there, there's no way. Yeah. Just so. the, the posing they're doing is kind of gay. A lot of like. Yeah. <laughs> feel that. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I haven't, okay. So I haven't been on Bumble in five years. I'm sure it's gone <laughs> since then. I feel like certain people in certain areas get better matches than other areas. I feel mm. like LA is trash for Bumble. When I'm in New York, the matches are elite. I like East Coast girls yeah. way more than West Coast. Yeah. So. Way more. It's not even close. I actually haven't tried Bumble in, in Bali. It'd probably be <laughs> though. Everyone's yeah, always there to party. Good. Yeah. How's the parties out there? Amazing. World class. Really? Actually, yes. Bali is so slept on as a destination for party culture. Elite. Mm. Some of the biggest clubs, the biggest venues, the best venues, they get big acts too. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Um, and Lil John has a residency there too. What? 
Little John has a residency at Savea in Bali. Absolutely. That's insane. Yeah. I didn't know they partied like that out and there. And they're just partying at the bottom of the island, off the cliff, the beautiful, overlooking, you know, the ocean. Okay. And Lil John is over there. What? <sighs> In Bali. That's wild. I know. So you're a huge partier every weekend? No. I'm more of a huge, you'll see me at the cappuccino place. Okay. Yeah. I only like to go to parties when I'm invited. I think because a lot of times expats invite me. I want to keep those relationships. Yeah. What's so, expats? Expats, expatriates, people who are like, for example, American and live abroad. Oh. Yeah. So Got it. if the expats invite me, I'm going because like I want those relationships. Got it. But I'm not really out just by myself partying every weekend. Yeah. So you found your group out there. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Are there mm -hmm. a lot of Americans out there? There are actually way more Russians. Russians? I mean, at one point, there were 40,000 new Russians per month coming to Bali. What? Yeah. I wonder why they're going there. I guess Russia's cold. Well, to escape the, at the point, at this point, it was kind of to escape the draft. Mm. They did not want to be involved with any activity like that. So a lot of them came to either Dubai or to Bali, and they just never left. Right. So to answer your question, there's really not that many Americans um, compared to other cultures mm. there. Are you doing psychedelics out there? No. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was. I, I almost thought to myself, like, what can I say? Yeah. But mushrooms are legal. Oh, they're legal there? Yes. Okay. So there is an island called Gili T, and it's like 20 minutes off of Bali. And that's where they call it Mushroom Island because mm. they serve these mushroom shakes and just go and party and that. I've done mushrooms there twice. Okay. Um, but all the other psychedelics I've done in South America. Mm. We'll talk about those. Yeah. How was the mushroom shake though? What was that like? Um, a lot more like, you know how everything here is so strong. The mushrooms, the weed, everything here is just strong, strong, yeah, strong. Yeah. There it's a lot more mellow and it creeps up slowly to where now the colors are just a little brighter. You know? See, I like that because I've had some bad trips out here. Same. It just hits way too strong. I've had one, only one bad trip. I thought I was going to die. Actually, I had a trip like that, but it wasn't on shrimps. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Was that ayahuasca? No. Ayahuasca, I had some really confusing information come mm. to me. Uh, everybody else at the retreat at the time was like getting, you know, coming up childhood stuff. Oh, this is why I'm like this. Yeah. I saw like monsters. Really? So, yeah. Like stepping all over. For example, you know, what's that? Where the wild things are. Mm-hmm. I saw like monsters like that with like claws stepping all over nature every single. And I did it five times. Ayahuasca. Wow. Every trip I did, it was the same thing that I saw. The same thing. Pretty much. Except for the last time. Okay. I was in a casino for that one. Ironically. That seems like a weird environment. Very. I would didn't take them in a casino. <laughs> I envisioned myself in a casino yeah. after I took them. But yeah, for the most part, I always saw like a, a giant monster just ruining nature. And the biggest takeaway that I got from ayahuasca was like, you are a piece of the puzzle of the collective conscious. The nature is you. You're not separated from it. Mm. Like we have to all almost save each other and coexist. It's cheesy. I could talk about it for a long time, but that's what I got from. I also did DMT. I also did Bufo. Mm. Um, was that the most intense one, Bufo? That was the most intense thing I've ever did in my whole life. They burn it on you, right? That's combo. Oh, combo. I did that too. Oh, jeez. You've done everything. <laughs> I've done everything except <laughs> um, like mescaline I, I haven't done. Okay. But yeah, no, combo, that was great. That's what they burn on you. Yeah. And you throw up. But then after that, you feel so invigorated. You feel mm. like you can run eight miles. Interesting. Yes. The bufo, that's smokable DMT that comes from the Sonoran Desert Toad. Mm. So they extract it from like the secretions of their skin. And it's like a crystal. So then you smoke it. That was the one where I died. <laughs> I did. I actually filmed it. I can show you later, but um, I passed out immediately what? after taking it. Inhale, pass out. And then moments later, I woke up and I felt like I was born again. Like I just exited the womb mm. again Crazy. as a baby. Yeah. So I immediately started crying. The birds were so loud. I felt like I could understand the ants crawling on me. Wow. It was so weird. Is that supposed to happen? Are you supposed to pass out on it? Um, The other encounters that I've heard, well, let me not say that I've heard. There were 19 other people there. Yeah. So I think I was number 12 to go. So I saw like 10 other, 11 other people go before me. Okay. Everyone was like that, except one guy and this 
One guy was like surfing through the air. <laughs> Everyone else passed out and he was just like, wow, like this. He's different. He was. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's crazy that you're watching random people do it though. Uh-huh. I'd be myself. There was one girl who, after watching everybody, kind of chickened out and she was like, I don't want to be I think I might vulnerable. have. I mean, it sucks though because you flew all the way there. So if you chicken out, it's like right. kind of a waste. Mm -hmm. And know? that was in Peru. Imagine flying all the way to Iquitos in the Amazon rainforest and not doing what you paid for. Yeah. And it's expensive too. So I'd be mm -hmm. like, damn, I might as well just do it. Yeah. <laughs> So, but that was so insightful. I would, have you done it? I, I've only done shrooms and acid. You should do Bufo if you can. Really? Abs, I highly recommend. Wow. Highly. You'll never be the same. After that, I came back. I'm not going to lie. My income did go down a little bit because I was very much like just trying to reconnect with this whole society. Right. You, you kind of unplug when you do something that profound. Mm. And then you have to find a way to replug and find your way. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, because you were killing it on OF during that time, right? I was. I was killing it. I got back and I was like, I <laughs> I started a plant shop. Oh, yeah? Uh-huh. And I, I had since closed it because I didn't li I lived in Vegas at the time. Mm -hmm. So I was doing this indoor, all hydroponic, selling these plants on Amazon, like mm. rare house plants. And it was doing really good. Um, But then I moved back to LA and I was like, okay, this is like, I can't move this back. So I sold all my plants, got rid of all my plants and decided to only focus on digital products. Wow. No, no more physical products, just only digital. So between OnlyFans <clears throat> and I also do marketing consulting. So yeah. between those two digital products, that's what I've been pursuing ever since. I got that. Mm -hmm. And you're killing it with the, the OF still? I am, but I am the type to ride the wave. And if that's not the wave, I'm not going to force it. Okay. And I do feel like OnlyFans is not the wave right now. Mm. It's it, The numbers probably are going down, right? Because it yeah. peaked during It did. And now guys are getting outside I again. I think everybody's afraid to say that. Yeah. Well, it's just what I've heard because I'm friends with a lot of the people in this space and their numbers are all down. Like yeah. no one's up. Yeah. Like we're living. We're still doing great. But I think the wave right now is, well, the next wave is Snapchat. Yeah. How all, all the influencers are going to make money. But even just do digital products is the wave. For sure. So. Because you got a lot of knowledge. So you could package that up. Yeah. Sell it for whatever price. Yeah. Dude, they're eating time. it up on TikTok right now. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I actually went to school for sales and marketing. So oh, nice. I used to do consultations for OnlyFans girls and other adult entertainers. Yeah. Well, I spread it to TikTok just last month and they're like, what? You do this? <laughs> so I've been booked every single day nonstop for social media audits and consultations. Damn. Yeah. Good, <laughs> man. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. It's a rare skill to have because you need obviously a background of following to be able to provide that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But even other OnlyFans girls, for example, if you're watching this and your numbers are down, think about what you're good at. It doesn't have to be just social media or content creation. There's something else you're killing it at. Mm. You just need to share that knowledge. And don't be afraid because you have to share some of it for free in order to get back from your followers. Absolutely. So me sharing for free has now gained me. I'm 22 clients behind Wow. just from last week of people whose pages, they just want me to look at it and say what's wrong with their TikTok. Mm. You know? Yeah. So. That's cool. I saw you went on No Jumper. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Yes. <laughs> Did you go on Plug Talk? No, he didn't want to have me on Plug Talk. Why? Because I didn't want to, can I say bad words on here? Yeah. I didn't want to him. Oh, so you were just going to go on to watch like Okay, <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, I don't do boy-girl content on my OnlyFans. Okay. I do solo content and sometimes girl-girl, but every girl-girl I've ever done has been an actual friend. I don't really meet up with strangers and go, hey, want to for OnlyFans? Got it. That's cool, but that's not my route. I'm not a star. I'm a content creator. So when he asked, you know, I said, well, I can like watch y'all and then I do my own thing over here, yeah. but I don't really want to swap bodily fluids because that's not what I do already. So that's why I didn't yeah. do plug talk. Got it. So you're not just randoms. No. You're picky. I'm not anybody. Remember last time I was in Bali. <laughs> so you're like, you care about that spiritual connection almost. I do. You know, I'm okay with like casual sex every now and again, but. I just don't want anybody. I do feel like the connection has to be there, even if it's fleeting. Mm, there has to be something. No, I agree. Yeah. I won't do a random. Never. Mm -mm. It's not worth it. Yeah.
Also, yeah, I'm 31 and I don't want to like slip up and get pregnant or <laughs> anything that's going to slow me down. We got motion right now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You want kids eventually though? Mm, I would be okay with them. I'm also okay without them. Wow. So let me tell you, I've been married before. What? Yeah. I didn't know that. I was married when I was 18, 18 that's to 22. Young. He was in the military. Um, I was a super proactive spouse. I'm pretty sure if he keeps up with me at all, he's probably tired of hearing me talk about our <laughs> past. But I already scratched that itch of like feeling like I need to be married or be a family to be valid as a woman. So now if it comes, I'm cool. But if it doesn't, cool. Yeah. That's very young. Was that common? Like for your well, family? for the military. Oh, for the military. Everybody in the military gets young because they want those housing and all mm. the marriage benefits. And they don't know if they're going to make it too, right? Yeah. Yep. That's tough though. I don't think I could do distance. Well, that's why. That's one of the reasons why they get married so young. Because of distance? Yeah. Why Why not just date as a married couple and live together and we get housing benefits? That's literally the thought process mm. of military spouses. Right. You don't have to go to Mississippi and I stay in California. I can come with you. I just got to marry you. Makes sense. Yeah. Because they get the houses for 0% down, right? Well, veterans, yes. But um, when you're in the military, they give you a housing allowance. Oh, they do? So they pay for your housing, but not single. Married. Oh. If you're enlisted. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. That's why wow. they get married. They yeah. wanna, they don't want to live on base. Got it. And this was when you were in LA or were you somewhere else? I was in, I was going to school at Georgia State at the time. Okay. Yeah. Georgia State. It was my State. first year of college. Did you make it all the way? To college? No, like did you graduate? Yes. Okay. But not from Georgia State. I ended up finishing Florida Tech. Got it. Yeah. What did you major in? Marketing. Oh, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I always knew I wanted to do something owning my own business because when I was in high school, I was in... In 2005 to 2010, to, well, 2006, you know you know how school is, yeah. the calendars. But yeah, that was MySpace. Mm. We didn't have even Facebook yet. Yeah. We didn't get that until like, what, 2010, 2009? So in high school for me, it was YouTube, 2006, MySpace. Those two things, if you were hot on either one, you're like a celebrity because mm. it was so new and there was not even a thing called an influencer. Right. Um, so when I was that young, I was like doing my thug thizzle on there. Um, and I was able to kind of move it as a military spouse too. A lot of people knew me as the military girl with the YouTube channel. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you grew a following. Yes, absolutely. Nice. Yeah. I would, I would have him on there sometimes my ex-husband and we would do like couples stuff. I'm not going to lie. I don't think I would do a couples channel again. Cause that stuff is hard. They never work out. They never work out. Ace family. Mm -mm. R.I.P. And then it's extra messy when things go down. Mm -mm. I, I don't, don't want to be memorialized for a relationship that didn't work. Yeah. I don't do public relationships, actually. Me neither. It's not worth it. <laughs> it never works out. Oh, my God. That's funny because I have dated some celebrities, but I've always been, like, not public with them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just so much negative energy going towards you. It just, it just never works out. Yes. It takes a mature person to realize that, though. Yeah. Because at first, you do want to be seen with your partner like, look, we are valid. Right. But then when you realize not everyone watching you has your best interest. And sometimes it's better to just save, you know, what's special for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. You still smoking every day, cannabis? Yep. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I smoked before I got here. <laughs> <laughs> I had to quit. Yeah? Yeah. But okay, why did you quit? Anxiety. I... The only reason I'm not hard on myself and I kind of go heavy is because I don't think I'm addicted. I'm able to come and go with no feelings at all. Like when I leave to go to Bali, yeah. I won't smoke for six weeks and okay. it'll be just fine. I won't be like, oh, where can I find weed here? Yeah. So you just, don't need it to eat? Uh, no. To sleep? No. Okay. That's when I consider an addiction. Because mm -mm. some people can't even eat food without getting high or oh, go to yeah. sleep without getting high. I look at it when I'm here as a reward. Like if I do something good, I'm like, you deserve a blunt. I feel that. <laughs> it's very easy to get weed out here. Yeah. Your taxi picks you up and they're like, you want to go to the dispensary? Are. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. Crazy. So I think old when I get older, because in 2040, I'm going to be running for president. I don't really? know. Well, I don't know if that's on your prompts, but. It was not. <laughs> okay, that did not come up on my research. Yeah. In 2040, I'm going to be running for president. Vote for Nina. You can also find me on Instagram. Vote for Nina. Um, my platform's going to be community and education. Mm. But I know that I'm going to have to stop smoking weed. Is that a requirement to be president? No. 
but I understand how optics work. Mm. That's why Barack Obama quit smoking cigarettes. Oh, he used to smoke cigs? He used to, all throughout his campaign, he smoked wow. all the way up until inauguration, basically. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Because he knew that it would make him a better president to establish the discipline and it would make him look better. Sacrifice, yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you have Kanye as your VP? No, but I wouldn't mind having him in some sort of like independent contractor <laughs> <laughs> position. I don't want you on the payroll, but yeah. you can give me your ideas occasionally. I feel that. Who's, yeah. uh, who do you think is winning this upcoming election? <sighs> it's sticky. Yeah. Because we all know people don't want jo Joe Biden back. And, okay, can I say something that might be unpopular? Yeah, go ahead. I think Trump is going to win. Wow. If he's given a chance to run again, I think he will win again. Because if you look at January 6th, the insurrection, mm. these people were willing to commit treason, which meant you could possibly be killed breaking into the White House. You could possibly lose your life. You were so for, you stood so hard. You were a Trump stan. You were willing to put your life on the line. Mm. That is a type of following that he has. It's not just uh, willy nilly, washing, wishy washy. It's hardcore radical. These people stand for Trump. Yeah. Nobody stands for Biden like that. <laughs> That's why I feel like. It's an unpopular opinion, but if you look at the energy behind both figures, one of them has radical energy and one of them has so-so energy behind them. Right. So. Yeah, I only know one person that voted for Biden. I've met thousands of people. Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, you're in Cali, so it's probably different, but out here in Vegas. For, are you talking about for the primaries or? Like in the last election? The last one? Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know anyone that voted for Biden. I honestly don't <laughs> even remember who I voted for. I didn't vote. <laughs> Yeah, I, I haven't voted ever. Yeah, what? Well, I just feel like, because I grew up in Jersey, so they always vote left. So there's no point in voting there. Then I moved to LA during that election. So there's no point in voting there. It's always left. Oh my goodness. So it didn't really matter if I voted or not. So not even on your local level, because I vote for the local stuff for sure. Really? Yeah. Oh, so you're super into politics. Well, yeah, because let me tell you, because the first time I voted on a local level is when I discovered that they're empty positions and that mm. you could win by default. Really? Yes. So after that moment, I got really into it because I'm like, wait, you could technically work your way up in the politic public office game by just winning default, your first position. <laughs> That's funny. I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah. I mean, I'll look into it. I'm not opposed. Well, look, if I'm on the ballot, I just need you to vote. You don't got to vote <laughs> <laughs> until 2040, technically, until I'm on there. 2040 so yeah yeah you'll i don't know who you'll be facing then that's a while because you have to be 45 right you so, have to be 35 oh, 35 but i think you should be 45 to even be taken seriously to put really? your money into a campaign i wouldn't put money into a campaign for a 35 year old well how old is vivek because he was young and i thought he did pretty well um isn't he isn't he in his 40s i think he's i don't in know his 40s. he looks young it's hard to tell with asians you know <laughs> you know what they say what Asian don't raisin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Black don't crack. Asian don't raisin. Yeah, blacks and Asians. Hard to tell. Yep. White people, though? Oh, you're telling quick. I feel like I'm overestimating a little sometimes. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, they, uh, they get offended. Yeah. So make sure you guys look out for that when you vote. But if you ever want to run for anything, you can just look at who doesn't have any candidates and mm. just all of a sudden now you're in power. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. What are you watching in your free time? <sighs> Wait. I just started The Circle, the newest season of that. Uh, I saw the first season. Is there anything? I watched The Great Gatsby. Oh, I did a shroom trip two nights ago, and I watched The Great Gatsby. Wow. What was that like? Um, I cried. Really? It is a kind of dark movie, right? Yes, but what I saw was so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I ever did shrooms, I, I watched the Johnny Depp version of Alice in Wonderland. Okay. And both of those films have very like bright cinematography. So it's a lot of like, whoa, that's big. Now it's little. Now it's dark. Now it's light. Why is it so red? Mm. It was like that, an optical illusion. But yeah, I cried because I was just like, wow, this is so beautiful. He did all of this for this girl. He did the most. He would host these parties just for this girl. Yeah. He bought a property across from the girl. <sighs> like, where does that exist anymore? 
none of my friends would do, go to that measure. I asked a guy in the elevator on the way here. I was coming down from my hotel. I said, hey, I have a question. This is so random. Back in the day when I was in my 20s, I used to get guys all the time want to buy me drinks at the bar and pay for my food. I used to get approached a lot. And now I don't get approached at all. Mm. I don't get guys. And I'm not looking for that, but I just notice it, that it's quiet around here. This guy in the elevator said, guys are getting smart. They're tired <laughs> of being used for drinks. They're smartening up. That's the problem. Mm. I was like, oh. Damn. Honest. <laughs> I'm like, but you're so cute. Who hurt you? Yeah. Oh, my God. He might have had a drink or two in him, right? He might have, because, like, how is that getting smart? Chivalry is dead. I don't know. I feel like Jay Gatsby wins in the end, sort of. Yeah. I don't even know how it ends, actually. They made us read that book in high school, and I, I, <laughs> I used Spark too. Notes. I didn't I even read too. it. <laughs> I used Spark Notes, and when there was no Spark Notes, I used Cliff Notes. Yep. I used yep. both, but then my teacher caught on, so all the questions on the test didn't come from Spark Notes. She was one of those. Oh. So I had to guess. She's so lame. Yeah. I wish they gave us books that... I don't know. Did you like that book? I mean... I did. There was other books I liked better. Yeah. I like that book though. I didn't like most of the books they made us read though. The curriculum stuff, like what's that one? The the Catcher in the Rye? Uh, no, the other one. The crazy Lord of the Flies. Oh, Lord of the Flies. The curriculum type books? No, get out of here. Yeah. They we should don't. just have every kid pick their own book and then write a report on it. Yes. That'd be sick. Yes. Cuz I thought I hated reading, honestly. The, the books were just really yeah. I would read books like, Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret, which is about like a 12-year-old girl starting her period. <laughs> and I would be so enticed because at the time, like, oh, that's me. I can relate. Yeah. I cannot relate to five kids getting dropped on an island without their parents and like eating each other or whatever <laughs> Lord of the Flies. I can't relate to that. R.I.P. to what? Piggy? Like, what Piggy is the name? satire behind? And you're teaching this to like seventh graders. Yeah. There was that one book where the guy killed his friend too, like backstabbed him. Forget what that one was. Oh my God. What You remember that one? I know what book you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. The, the guy was dumb. He had mental issues and then he killed him. Lenny. <laughs> yeah. I forget what that book was. And then there's one line from a random high school movie that I remember forever. And I don't know if you guys have seen this. Soma. Soma. Have you seen where, where they were feeding people other people? No. And at the end of the movie, they were like, Soma is people. Jeez. <laughs> they were like compressing their bodies down to like bite-sized bars and that was like the superfood in the movie what the hell yeah sounds we had to like watch some, that in uh, high school too sounds like some human centipede it was called soma <laughs> you, you <laughs> ever watched centipede? that no they made like four of those it sounds kind of like two girls one cup i've seen that i didn't watch it at the peak though i, I watched it 10 years later because i remember kids talking about it i've still never seen it what i'm scared oh you should see it <laughs> i think everyone should see it but like Definitely don't watch it again. Okay, just once. Yeah, just once. Oh my god! Just to know what everyone was talking about. I remember. Do you remember when that was like? <gasps> yeah, yeah. In middle school. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. That was gross. I didn't even know what <laughs> was back then, and people were just talking about it. Well, the crazy thing is, they wouldn't even be able to post that on OnlyFans now. It's still at stream. Really? Oh yeah. They don't allow body fluids and stuff like that on there. Oh, so you can't have sex? You can have sex, but you can, there's no like puking, vomiting. No, nothing like that wow. allowed. Interesting. Yeah, I know these twin sisters that got banned on OnlyFans. Yeah, no poop, no pee, no none of that. Damn. No. People have their fetishes. Regular boring sex only on OnlyFans. I mean, you probably get some wild requests. <laughs> so. Yes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, but I'm kind of scaling it back because, again, I'm a content creator, not a star. So yeah. I think a lot of these guys, when they subscribe, they think, oh, she's like all the other extreme girls. But I'm like, no, no. Yeah, you're different. I'm, I am. So my last fan bought me a dress. I was going to wear it today, but I didn't want it to be like too like short for sitting. Yeah. So now I'm getting them to do stuff like that. Buy me dresses, buy me shoes. I I'm not sticking stuff in my butt for you. <laughs> We're past that era. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. It's not the pandemic. You can't even charge top, top price yeah. for that. So if you're going to be doing crazy stuff, it needs to be top price or... Uh -uh. Yeah, now they're charging 10 bucks for that. Yeah, no, it's clearance, $8.99. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's really people buying you stuff though? Yeah. Wow, mm -hmm. that's cool. It's it's not out of the ordinary, but typically it's a small price range. I don't have people buying me like my rent or Got a it. car. I'm not, I don't have those But you stories. trust them with your address? No, Amazon wishlist. Amazon wishlist. So you put all the things you want in a wishlist 
and people buy it and it's it sends it anonymously. They don't know their address. Oh wow. Yeah, it's like a gift registry almost. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Does it have their name on it? Yes. Okay. It says who it's from. And you thank them? Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. You ever meet them in, in person? Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. Oh, I dated a fan. What? By accident. Oh, you didn't know? He didn't tell me he was a fan first oh. until we were already dating. That's creepy. Yeah. And then he told you? He was really hot though. He was really hot and he had a huge package. Wow. So when he was like, yeah, I used to buy this video and I have this video still. I'm like, what? Oh. That's a red flag. He had other red flags that didn't end up working out. Okay. Yeah. So you've been in a few relationships? Yeah. How many? Um, I don't know. Damn, I'm you not, lost track? No, I'm not counting. Okay. I, I'm not counting. Do we are we do we write them down? I've only been in one, so Oh. Yeah, I got lucky. Well, okay, my ex husband. Okay. And then after that, I was in a few relationships. I had another long one for seven years. That oh, one was polyamorous. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So you enjoyed that? I didn't like the way he did it. I would like it better if I did it. <laughs> Oh, so only he could do it? So at the beginning, it, that was the rule. Okay. It was like only he could have other women. So it's probably a professional athlete or something. He was a celebrity. Got it. And then once I kept breaking up with him because he didn't understand my love language is when he goes, okay, you can come back and do whatever you want to do. I just want to have your company. Hmm. And I was like, okay. So I started dating that guy, the fan. Okay. Yeah. And so I was dating them at the same time at one point, but the fan got jealous of him once he figured out who it was. He was like, what? I'm sharing you with so-and-so? <laughs> so it was like a competition and it was really, it started getting really weird. Damn. Yeah. Well, guys are territorial, so I can see it. Yeah. I don't think they're built to want to share their girls. I think they could. My ideal life would be like Savages. Have you seen that movie with no. Blake Lively? What is it? It's a movie. What's that movie about? Have you seen it? Oh, I like Blake Lively though. I think I think they're like drug dealers or something, but she has two men uh -huh. and they live together. And the two men are friends, but they're also both her boyfriends. Mm. So, so they're like a happy throuple. Setup? That's my ideal setup. A happy throuple. Yeah. That's I probably couldn't do that and be president. I recognize it. <laughs> but you know. You could do it low key. There's yeah. some presidents that have had some. I uh, mean, Monica Lewinsky was doing her, <laughs> her thing. Yeah. So I saw a throuple here in Vegas. Yeah. At the bowling alley, yeah. It's starting to become more normalized. Yeah, it was two guys and one girl. So Whoa. The, the guy would go to bowl, the girl would be making out with the guy, and then he'd come back and the guys would switch. See, I want that. Yeah? Damn. Yeah. I don't know. For me, sex is like a spiritual connection, you know? I agree. But I also, because, so when you get married, I think most people think that's going to be their end-all, be-all person. And so they seek 100% of their needs in that one person. Mm. And sometimes that's a lot. For that person. Like, that's too much pressure. I cannot be all your needs. I feel that. I find having two people <laughs> sometimes is a great balancer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because each guy's got different tactics. Everyone's good at something. The only way this works, though, is you can't be possessive. You have to allow people to be who they are and just enjoy them in that state. Right. And do you think it's important they're aware? Yes. Oh, okay. yes. Everyone has to be consenting. Got it. Mm -hmm. Some people don't tell the partner. About the well, that's partner. just cheating. <laughs> <laughs> the cheating is, there's a difference between open relationships or polyamory and cheating. And I need to say this on air because this is kind of like a big topic on TikTok. Yeah. Um, cheating is deception. That is what that is. Mm. When there's no deception, there's no cheating. I feel that. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So we were talking before we, we started filming. You watch... Yeah, okay. I like watching pretend people when I'm going to like pleasure myself. If it's going to be I don't want real people. Because mm. mm -mm. I imagine their stories and like who they are and I don't want to watch like somebody's friend or daughter mm. or like it's just so weird to me. So What type of do you watch? Okay, so I like watching 3D is my absolute favorite because the creators on there are some really popular ones mm. like um, Bloodlust Serene, the 3D people that do her stuff. Amazing. Uh, amazing. Wow. Big tits. 3D. They look real. I'll have to uh, have to study that a little bit. Yeah. See what happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, wait. I have one more thing. Okay. The second time I got my boobs done, I actually put together a Pinterest board of titties. Mm. 
<laughs> and took them to my surgeon and said, I want my boobs like this. Whoa. Yeah. So you got surgery on your boobs? Well, yeah, I have two. This is my second breast implant. The first ones I got, I was 19. And they popped? No. You have to get them redone every 10 years. Oh, what? Yeah. I didn't know that. So I got them redone in 2020. Okay. And that was only nine years, but I had my Pinterest board. I'm like, I want my boobs to look like <laughs> boobs. So what does <laughs> boob look like? They're just so round and big and perky. And whenever like they do the <laughs> porn, it's from this like below POV. Mm -hmm. So you can see like below just looks so round. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I want to <laughs> myself. I really want like a... a animator or like a studio to make me my own episode you should do it yeah spencer knows the owner of fleshlight shut so. up yeah period you want your own fleshlight my own fleshlight <laughs> anything else uh you want to promote or close off with that was a fun episode wait we already hit like 30 minutes it's been 40 minutes shut up yeah that was quick you guys we didn't even talk about bali we need a part two okay well if you guys would like a social media audit, they're going crazy right now on TikTok. You can go and check out some of my most popular audits and strategies for your favorite popular entertainers. I've done some for like super popular TikTokers. But yeah, you can always visit ninadesthemost.com for all the updates, social media audits, and to follow my presidential campaign. Boom. We'll link below. Thanks for coming on, Nina. <laughs> thanks. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.